You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 20th of March and I'm Will from Milford. Last week was a massive week in markets where we saw large swings in risk assets as volatility soared. The US Move Index, which measures volatility of US Treasury bond options, hit close to 200, a level only seen once before in 2008 since the index started in the 1980s. Another show of this was data showing flow of funds to money market funds spiked to over $100 billion last week, a top five weekly inflow going back to 1982. The US two-year bond yield moved over 100 bips lower during the week, an extraordinary move in what is the world's benchmark of a risk-free asset. Adding to this was the 50 basis point daily ranges it traded in almost unheard of moves. The trigger of these moves was the collapse of US regional bank, Silicon Valley Investment Bank, which we discussed at length on last week's podcast after a run on deposits and large mark-to-market losses on treasury positions. This was then followed by Signature Bank collapsing and significant issues at First Republic Bank over the weekend. In the US, when these banks collapse, they are taken over by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation who runs the administration process and guarantees deposits up to $250,000. However, in this case, in an attempt to calm customer and investor fears, they agreed to pay out all deposits in full, regardless of size, funded by the government. The market took this positively as it signals that the US won't let any banks fail, however it does pose some further issues. In the US, the regional banks fill an important space in the market, where the major SIB banks don't generally play. US banks, with less than $250 billion in assets, account for about half of commercial lending, 60% of residential real estate lending and 45% of consumer lending. It appears likely that access to credit is going to be more restricted going forward without these regional players, which has seen a number of economists reduce their GDP forecasts. Bank issues weren't just contained to the US, with Swiss lender Credit Suisse's run of recent issues continuing. The stock plunged 25% on Wednesday night after their biggest shareholder, Saudi National Bank, said that they would not contribute any more funds to the struggling bank. Investors remain very nervous about the outlook, as credit default swaps, insurance on the bank's debt, continue to reach new highs. Sears did get some reprieve when on Thursday, the Swiss Central Bank agreed to give them $50 billion in emergency loans to shore up solvency concerns, which saw the stock bounce back 20%. However, concerns still remain about the longer term outlook. The other key focus last week was the US February CPI data, which was released Tuesday night. While headline CPI continues to drop, the month-on-month print surprised to the upside, printing at 0.5% versus expectations of 0.4%. Both core and headline CPI continue to re-accelerate since bottoming late last year, in a trend that will concern the central bank, with core CPI stubbornly high at 5.5%. Services inflation remains the main driver of inflation as goods and energy eases. While macro news continues to dominate the narrative, there was also some interesting stock updates here in Australia. Small biotech Neurin Pharmaceuticals received their Phase 3 FDA approval last weekend for their drug to treat Rett syndrome. This is a huge milestone for the now only approved treatment for Rett's, a neurological condition that mainly impacts teenage girls, as the drug can now go into production. There remains a number of further catalysts for global distribution deals and other further promising drugs in their pipeline, which investors are excited about. The stock soared to be up 72% on the week. Bus operator Calcian raised $281 million to fund the acquisition of US bus company All Aboard America for US $325 million. All Aboard America is a specialist transport provider running charter services for a number of companies, including Apple, Google and Tesla. This is Calcium's first move into the US market, something the company has been looking to do for some time. The equity raise was done at $5.55, a 12% discount to pre-raise. This week, the key focus is on the US Federal Reserve's meeting. Post the events of last week surrounding financial stability issues, there is a fair amount of uncertainty about how the Fed will proceed. Pre the SIVB issues emerging, 
the market had moved expectations towards a 50 basis point hike post a run of strong data prints. As of Friday, the market is pricing no move. However, amongst the economist community, there is a fair dispersion of views around a pause 25 basis point or 50 basis point hike. While the hike will be closely watched, the commentary from the Fed will be even more crucial. As the Fed has been in blackout during this entire episode, the market has little idea what their thoughts are. In a tricky situation, balancing re-accelerating inflation and financial stability. Thanks for listening and good luck this week.